literally also didn't i not write those songs but wait i just sold them for eight figures so i guess i did write them after all like just be talking for years not knowing so, i mean she's <laughs> she's collecting iggy azalea sells her masters and publishing for a purported eight figure deal okay so that's at least 10 million wow. right potentially up to 99 million and she says i don't have to work another day in my life now, one of my favorite things to do on this channel is to talk about catalog sales because these are the things behind the scenes that I'm doing with my law firm, with my clients. They're a lot of fun because these are the big deals. Yeah. There's a lot of money for these things. Now, with Iggy, right, we're talking about like she just kind of blew out of nowhere for a lot of us, took over the planet, and now she's just like, great, time to sell, which is smart. Time to cash out. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if she's making, let's say, 20 million you know on the low end from i mean really what has she done like three records total to date i i, I don't know but she's definitely got some heavy hitting songs on i mean on spotify i'm looking right now i mean you know fancy's like sitting at like 624 million on on spotify uh, her black widow songs just gone huge i'm actually surprised that you know she's another one of these younger kind of artists that we were seeing that are selling their catalogs that we covered um, Derek from Sum 41 did it. Uh, you spoke about Justin Timberlake had a huge catalog sale, but I mean, he's been, he's been around for a little bit, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy, but yeah, sold to, um, with domain capital group. That's right. Domain capital group. And additionally, the report or reports say that there's a trigger for future earnings on masters that was also part of the deal. So sometimes the way we do that is if music continues to, uh, you know, increase in interest mm. sales, revenues, all that, sometimes there can be additional bumps that the artist and the labels get on the back end. So um, it sounds like there was something kind of like that. It was Iggy's bad dream label that she started, she fully owns. And so that's where her new distribution deal that she's doing with Horizon, mm. The new music's going to be coming new, through. So she has a new album that she said she's going to drop next year. Um, you know, like she's kind of compared, she, you know, she was getting a lot of, you know, social media because people like to come make comments on social media, try to compare her, her situation to Taylor's and Taylor Swift's. And she was just like, no, it's totally different. Like she didn't like Taylor Swift didn't really profit from it, but like, you know, she is, she's she's now made it so she can go out of you know go out and write out and do whatever she wants to do make music or not but she's set for life and you know she's earning what what it would have made in a lifetime just all in one lump sum so you know yeah and for those of you who don't know right what the what he's referring to is with taylor swift's catalog sale right her label owned the music so the label right. had the right to sell the catalog yeah. this was kind of an upset for her because she wasn't given the opportunity to purchase back the catalog at a price she thought was reasonable i read that she was given an opportunity but they were just you know asking for something Which outrageous two, yeah, but crazy but you know i'll tell you what you know as as a label that invests in artists that's kind of the exchange, right? So you get the mm. investment back via the music. You have an artist that takes over the planet like Taylor. And then if you decide you want to sell it for a certain price, you don't have to sell it back to the artist. And that brings up these ethical issues of, is that right? Shouldn't she be able to take control of her catalog? Now she's doing her own thing at this point where she's like, I'm yeah. just going to re-record. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. I which mean, she's, which is, she's entitled to. But they're definitely not similar uh, situations. And then, you know, it was kind of funny, right. too, is like, you know, uh, she responded to uh, the accusations, you know, or wanted to bring back the accusations that, you know, she doesn't write any of her songs. And she goes, literally, also, didn't I not write those songs? But wait, I just sold them for eight figures. So I guess I did write them after all, like just be talking for years, not knowing. So, I mean, I guess that also puts that to, I mean, she's <laughs> she's collecting. Collected. The end of an era, Iggy's third studio release arrived via Bad Dreams and Empire in August of last year. Fancy, her blockbuster 2014 hit with Charlie XCX has been certified eight times. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Uh, big win, big win for uh, Iggy. And, uh, you know, I love I love to see these artists that are able to sell their catalogs and, um, you know, just just and and really set themselves up. I mean, that's the dream, just to just to be able to do it. And we're just seeing so many artists doing it. It's it's interesting to see them when they're when they seem a little you know newer artists. But it just goes to show how valuable your music catalog can be, even at you know 
just at, 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 since what her big hit was a 20 2014 so i mean how many years is that what is that like uh eight years eight yeah 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 amazing <laughs> 